Good morning. We're going to start today on student activity sheet 12, building a robot. Um, this bell ringer, let's just talk about um, the activity we did yesterday on activity uh, student activity sheet 11. Uh, the simple activity chart we used yesterday gives you the tools to analyze more complicated systems. These activity graphs are a very powerful tool for visualizing and analyzing complicated organizational situations. Based on this analysis, business managers can decide how to best allocate limited resources to a project. In other words, how would we be able to use the staff we have in the most efficient fashion to get things done? We'll look at that a little bit um, further here in a minute. Consider a complex project like designing and building a robot. Here's a good example. Many individual tasks must be performed in a very specific or certain order. There are also different teams of specialists assigned to completing each task. You can have computer programmers, engineers, technicians. Then, of course, you've got the project manager, too. Now, as a project manager, how do you decide how long a project will take? Okay, there's lots of things involved there. you got to know how long each task takes, and then you got to put those tasks together in a fashion an order that makes sense. And then you got to think about who's going to work on which activities and how long those people are going to be assigned to those tasks. And that's that's a lot of things we're going to look at. I mean, I know I kind of did this bell ringer for you, but think about an example, um, say constructing or building your house. You know, many of you want to get married and have a nice house with your spouse and um it takes a lot of time to determine exactly what fits for both people. When I know this, and a lot of people that have had built houses um, together with their spouse realize that it can be a very stressful situation. But there's a lot of information that has to be put into it. You know, what kind of sink you want to use in the bathroom, kind of kitchen appliances you want, um, how big you want the, the rooms to be, whether you want vaulted ceilings, what kind of roof shingles or possibly tin roof, or maybe terracotta roof shingle. Those lots of things you have to, it, a lot of things be involved. But, you know, as we all know, you can't put the roof on a house until you build the structure of the house itself. So there you go. Same thing, can't put the walls or the windows on until the walls are built. So you get an idea. <clears throat> all those tasks have to be done in a specific order. And a project manager is someone that puts those in order. And in order for him to decide how long a project will take completely, so if you ask a guy, a contractor, hey, how long is it going to take to build my house? He has to take all those endeavors into play and determine how long, in order, if they were done efficiently, how long it would take. All right. So let's look into this a little further. Oops. Sorry. I should be presenting. I apologize, y'all. Shame on me. You get to see me working as we work. All right. Good things. Let's talk about good things. Y'all need to give me some messages. I'm, I'm being very serious about this. I would love to share the good things happening in your life in these videos. Um, I'll never use your name, um, but I would like to go ahead and share this because there are many people that will be watching these videos in the future that would be interested in what goes on in a person's life that is good. <clears throat> um, as far as me, the good thing that happened to me this past weekend was I got to attend. It was the... Uh, the biggest day in our beekeeping year in my family, it was our annual bee school. We attended the Texas A&M Agri Life Center. Um, the program offers, uh, it raises money for the youth program that offers uh, the youth in the program. Free bees, beekeeping suits, information, hives, and all that good stuff. So if you're interested, give me a, give me a, a message and I'll be more than happy to Point you in the right direction. So lesson objectives today, I can construct activity graphs to incorporate time constraints and interrelationships between and among tasks. All right. So building a robot. And you see from this table here, you're going to lead a group that's going to design and build a robot. And we've got a few teams. We've got computer programmers, engineers, and technicians. Uh, and the following table indicates the different activities that go into this complex process which teams are in charge of which activities, the number of individuals from that team dedicated to that activity, how long the activity will likely take, and which activities must be completed before an activity can be started. All right. 
Let's move on. Now, I have drawn an idealized activity graph here. And if you look carefully, and it's a small section right here, but the first activity that has no activity that must finish first, what do we call that kind of activity? We'll look into that here in a minute. The sensory program takes four hours and it comes right off the start box because they have no critical activity or no activity that must be done before it. Um, artificial intelligence is the same way. And so is down here a little bit further body design, no activity. So they all come off here. All right. Voice systems must require AI to be completed. Okay. So AI has to be completed for voice systems to work. Now I've got an idea and I'm going to go ahead and do this since we're, uh, looking at this, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to color code anything by computer programmer with the color gray. Okay, so if it's a computer programmer that has to do it, I'm going to color each one of these gray. Um, body design is not by a computer programmer, it's by an engineer, right? But voice systems is by a computer programmer. So we'll color it gray. How about uh, uh, motion. Motion is by a computer program. So we're going to color it gray. So that's all four of the tasks by computer programmers. How about engineers? There's only three tasks that are done by engineers. But let's color the engineers blue. I design is by engineers. We'll color it a very light blue. Okay. Body design also by engineers. We'll color it very light blue. All right. And let's see. Um, arm and leg design engineering. So we'll change that to blue. Here we go right there. All right. So all the remaining tasks are by the technicians and we're going to color those green. How's that? So head assembly, we'll color it a light green. Arm and leg assembly, same thing, light green. Torso assembly, light green. These are all by engineers. Uh, let's see. Appearance, light green. And then finally, the last one. Final assembly is also light green. So we've color coded them to help us understand uh, which team works on it. So if it's gray, we know it's computer programs. Um, if it's blue, it's engineers, and if it's green, it's technicians. That's just helpful stuff, okay? So now we look at it, and we can truly see the activity graph uh, works really well, and it helps us see exactly what we're looking for. Kind of categorizes and, and separates things and help us organize our stuff and our thoughts. Um, now, some people will actually color code the start and the finish so that we separate them from the tasks, but as you can see, I've just made them into a, an oval and that, that designates them separately. So notice that some of the arrows are dotted. The only reason I dotted those lines, they still are activities that have to be done before another activity. It's only because they crossed another line. They don't, you, you don't do task assembly and then to appearance because there's already a line going there. Um, it just crossing over the arm and leg assembly to appearance. And so I want to make sure that we know that that's still there. All right. So using the information in the first three columns of the table, build an activity graph, include start and finish boxes. So now that I've built this activity graph, what I've done is I've uh, put it in the wrong spot. So I'm going to move it to the slide that it needs to be. Some of you are accustomed to work in progress, and that's exactly what we've done. We built the activity graph, and we have it all set up. The next question is, what is the minimum time required to design and build the robot? All right. Now, if you remember from yesterday's assignment, SAS 11, Student Activity 11, tells us that the time that the pathway through the activity graph that takes the longest time is the minimum time of completion. So let's see. Four and five is nine. 
and five is 14, and four is 18. So this top path is 18. Let's try four and 10, that's 14, and three is 17, and eight is 15, and four is 19. Let's try the same path, 14, 17, is that right? 14, 17, 25, that's 29. What was I thinking? Four, 14, 17, 25, I don't know why I went to 15. 29, that's a lot longer than the other one. We've got another pass, but it comes up here to 25, and then it adds two, and that's only 27. So, so far, this pathway, um, sensory program, motion, arm and leg design, arm and leg assembly, and final assembly is the longest. Um, but that's all the pathways that originate through sensory program. Let's go through artificial intelligence. So AI is five. Go to uh, vision, a voice system, that's eight. Another five for head assembly, that's 13 plus four is only 17. Obviously not a very long. That's not our minimum time of completion. Um, let's go another way. Um, AI is five. Motion is 10, that's 15. Three is 18. Eight is 26. Um, is that right? 5, 15, 18, 26. Yes. 4 is 30. So that's longer than the 29 we determined going this way. So artificial intelligence, motion, arm and leg design, arm and leg assembly, and final assembly is going to be 30. If we go this way, it's only going to be uh, 28. So we know that's not the longest time. Um, so that's all of the AI pathways we could take. <clears throat> Let's try through the body design. So body design is 4. Uh, torso uh, assembly is two, that's six. Uh, final assembly is four, that's 10. Obviously not the longest because that goes on to finish. And it's even shorter going this way, it's only eight. So the longest pathway is arm and leg design, or I'm sorry, uh, <laughs> artificial intelligence, motion, arm and leg design, arm and leg assembly, and then final assembly, which is a total of 30. And uh, that would be your answer to this question. Um, you can go back and look at it if you'd like to. At what point in the timeline does each activity for the completion of the entire robot begin and end? Okay. Does each activity, let's go back and look at it. When does um, motion end? Let's, let's think about motion. Okay, it has two um, activities that must be finished first, um, sensory programming and artificial intelligence. So sensory program takes four, and then we can start motion. But we can't start motion until artificial intelligence is done, and that takes five hours. So motion won't finish, and it won't start until artificial intelligence ends. And so we're going to add those five hours to the 10 hours it takes to do motion. So that would take a total of 15 hours or weeks. I'm sorry. I apologize. I've been saying hours. It's weeks. So arm and leg design has all those as activities that must finish first. So the 15 adds on to the three for the arm and leg design, and that makes it um, 18 hours is how long it would take to get arm and leg design. And you get that process here too. Arm, um, uh, voice system must be uh, have artificial intelligence done before it can be started. So artificial intelligence takes five hours, and then you add the three hours of the voice systems, and then it would be done in eight hours. So you get the idea. So let's move on. Right. And this is a breakdown of when activities will start and when they will finish. And other activities, once they're done, will begin. Um, as you can see, they're labeled as activities one, two, seven, three, five, whatever. Um, I didn't set it up that way, so this may be confusing. But just look at the table, and it'll tell you. This is activity one, two, three, four, and so on. Okay. All right. Which of the 12 activities are critical activities? First of all, we need to define what a critical activity is. A critical activity is an activity, if delayed, would possibly affect the minimum time of completion. So what were the activities on the minimum time of completion pathway. Let's go back and look. We said AI, M, ALD, ALA, and FA. The minimum time of completion lies on that pathway, so all five of these activities are considered critical activities.
Yep, there you go. There's the five activities. All right, since any delay in the completion of time for critical activities results in a longer total completion time, these activities may need extra people assigned to them. Suppose you can reassign team members when they're finished with the activities already on to an activity according to the following guidelines. No one can work on an activity outside of his or her team. So computer programmers can't work in engineering fields. Engineers can't work in technicians. Technicians can't work in computer programming or engineering and so on, et cetera. For example, a computer programmer must be assigned to activities one, two, three, or four, all the ones that have computer programmer and cannot be assigned to any of the other activities. Now, every activity must have at least one person assigned to it at all times. Can't go forward if you're not working on an activity. An activity that receives extra help can be completed one week earlier for each additional person assigned to it. And then an activity cannot be completed in less than one week, even if more people are assigned to it. And finally, an activity that takes one week longer, or an activity takes one week longer to complete for each person that's removed from the original group. So if you could reassign one person, how would you do it? And how does the reassignment affect the total completion time? Well, one of the things they didn't give us here in parameter size is how many in each team? <laughs> if we start with three, we're going to be waiting a long time because if you go back to the actual activity graph, right off the bat, we need three activity or three computer programmers in sensory program and three in AI. So we would need at least six to get started. And then on engineering, we would need three more, okay? Which is cool if you think about this. Um, you would only need three engineers depending on how well you could distribute the different people. But you would need at least six computer programmers to start. So three for the sensory program and three for AI. Now, once they were done here, the sensory program, they would be idle for an hour because they could not do anything until AI was done. Because the only tasks available is the voice system in motion. And neither one of them can start until AI is done. So we've got three guys we're going to have to pay to just stand around and do nothing. All right? Or a week, they're not going to work. You see what I'm saying? So they would be laid off for a week or whatever. And this is kind of complicated if you think about it. So, but the body design, those engineers, they're done in four weeks. And as soon as the sensory program is done, those three could be assigned up here to iDesign for five weeks. And it would matter. But as soon as these, this fifth week is over, you have six computer programmers at your disposal. You could put three on motion and, th well, how many do you need for voice systems? You need three. Oh, no. You always need three, three members for each one, three for each. But as soon as voice systems was over, so in eight weeks, which is going to be uh, four weeks into the motion, you can put those three over there. And there's supposed to be six weeks left. You could reduce that time by three weeks. So right there, you know you could affect the total time. You see how that works? If you just moved one, you would affect the total time. But then you'd have... A computer, two computer programmers, you can lay off and let them go. But a, um, a good project manager would realize the uh, duplication of putting extra people in there to help get the process done. That reduced the program by two weeks. That's You don't have to pay them as long if they're not there as long. So it's all about being efficient, that efficient person that runs that program, project manager. He's the one's going to make extra money if he gets a project done early and he doesn't have to pay people as much. So, all right. So that's the way you could do it. If you could reassign one person, how would you do it? And how would it affect total completion time? If you could uh, reassign two, we discussed that a little bit. And yes, it would affect the total completion time. It could reduce the time by one or two weeks. And if you can do that with every one of these teams, you could easily finish, especially if you're reducing the time of this motion by a vast amount. You could start the engineering tasks earlier, and you could possibly get some of those extra engineers and start those earlier or finish those earlier, getting some of these jobs done quicker, and so on, etc. Um, 
that time reduction not only helps in getting the job completed quicker, but it may help in having to pay fewer people. All right. This is the same thing. How many people would you could assign anybody? How would do the reassignments affect total completion? It could vastly reduce the total completion time. All right. Could the total completion time be further improved by allowing people to work on activities outside of their official team designation? Now I'm going to do ourselves a favor here. I'm going to back out here. I'm going to go back up to where the activity graph is. And I'm going to duplicate the slide so we can look at it closer to that. Uh, I think that's down here. Yes, that's it. So let's look at that question again. Could the total completion time be further improved by allowing people to work on activities outside of their official team designation? Justify your response with appropriate reasoning. Okay, so let's say that our computer programmer guys finish, all right? And these three guys for a week have nothing to do, but they could go help the guys in iDesign, right? Or for that matter, see these four guys in engineering? They're gonna go up here at iDesign, but then you've got technicians that are over here that only take two weeks to finish. I mean, you really won't need the technicians a lot, <clears throat> and they can come back. That's in six weeks, and you can see four and five is nine. These two guys are going to be done in two weeks, and this is not going to be done for a long time, so they can be brought over here and help in head assembly after I design and voice system is completed. We already know that we could probably take these three guys and put them somewhere. Well, considering the fact that iDesign is available, we could throw all three of them in there for a week and help out until these two tasks become available to be worked on. Does that make sense? And that would help a lot, especially if, even if it only helped a half a week, it would still reduce that by a week and a half. You see what I'm doing? And that's exactly why we would consider it. What do we call an activity that if delayed would delay the time to complete all activities? And we call that in this uh, must finish first activity or must first finish activity before we complete. That is actually called a prerequisite activity. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to type that in there because it's not in there now. Um, let me put something in here real quick. Okay, move that up a little bit, and I'm going to add a little animation, fade in, on click. Okay, yeah, that's it. All right, so let's present. All right, what do we call an activity that if delayed would delay the time to complete all activities? A prerequisite activity. All right, so I'm going to launch you with this. If a man neglects education, he walks lame to the end of his life. Um, I agree if he neglects his education. Um, another wise statement I've heard is that the day you stop learning is the day you die. So neglecting your education could cause some problems. So I'm going to let you go. Uh, get to work on that assignment in the Google Classroom for SAS 12. Um, just about everything I think you need is on this uh, video. So take it with you when you go to work on that assignment. In the meantime, be blessed and be a blessing.